Hi guys, so this is a quick rundown on the foil drive axis prone downwind boards, of which there are three in the range. This is the smallest, the 5.0 by 19 inches wide and 50 litres. The next size up is 5.4 by 19 and a half inches wide and 60 litres. And over there I have the largest in the range, 5.8 by 20 inches wide and 70 litres. Now, the design brief for these boards was to make it as easy as possible to get up on foil using foil drive, but at the same time retaining as much performance as we possibly could. How do we do? Well, to answer that, we need to go into all the design characteristics. And at first glance, you may say, oh, it looks like a scaled down SUP downwind board. Well, the long narrow shape, yes, but really there's so much more going on um, with the design that it's, uh, it's, you'll see in a minute, it's definitely not as simple as that. Um, first of all, though, the uh, long narrow shape obviously gives very good board speed, uh, good acceleration, um, and ultimately it glides really, really nicely. But you can go two ways with that design. You can go with a planing hull or you can go with a displacement hull. Displacement hulls, certainly when you get below or 18 inches and below in width, they almost partially, if not totally, become displacement hulls no matter what the design is. So we decided to keep the boards 19 inches minimum for the smallest one and just going up slightly more for each size to keep the uh, um, to keep the proportions true or uh, yeah true to the design um, but really you've got to have a look at what's going on at the hull as well especially at the back of the board let's show you here for a start so from about here the, the, the rear third of the board is almost completely flat we introduce a little bit of rocker in the midsection and then obviously you've got to have rocker in the nose for obvious reasons now, we didn't want to have a fully flat board all the way up to here because that makes for very hard uh, touchdowns um, and also a flat hull sticks to the water. Um, a little bit of rocker allows a very clean release from the water which allows for much quicker and easier takeoffs. Um, however, from here all the way back, super flat and keeping it nice and wide. Most um, downwind boards have got a very pronounced V or at the very least are, uh, you know, they have a shallow V there. Now the problem with that is twofold. They're very skatey at the rear when you're standing up. Um, bearing in mind I'm talking about full drive use. Um, and secondly, they're prone to sinking uh, when you stand up. Um, and they don't come onto the plane particularly quickly. They, they are still sort of pushing through the water to a certain extent. This is a true planing hull. And what we're aiming to achieve with this board design, and I think we achieved it, is that it's super quick to get up on to the plane. So it's now skimming across the top of the water. And when you stand up, because we've got this flat wide tail here all the way to the, to the back of the board, it allows stability and it prevents the tail from sinking, therefore allowing you to, um, uh, to build up speed as quickly as possible, retaining stability, which is that ease of use that we wanted to retain as well as performance. You go super narrow on the, uh, the board design and yes, you'll probably get a faster board speed, but you lose that level of stability and you, you lose that ease of use. Um, I think also you, you lose versatility as well, and I'll go into the reasons why this board is super versatile um, in just a moment. Okay, so let's have a look at the nose, because I think the nose is possibly one of the most underrated parts of any board, certainly these boards. Now, most SUP downwind boards and a lot of prone boards are either flat on the deck here at the nose or they have a scoop and quite a lot of them are, are, are quite pointed so as to reduce the volume in the nose and that's really important for a long sup board or a long prone board because having less volume on such a, a distance away from your front foot 
um, reduces swing weight. But we don't have that problem here because these boards are so much shorter. So we knew that we wanted to have a little bit more volume in the nose because the technique to getting up on foil with foil drive, the thrust from the motor not only produces forward speed, but it also produces lift. And as you accelerate, the nose of the board is forced up. So you have to counter that by pushing it down. And if you have really too little volume in the nose, it makes it super easy to sink the nose and then it stops you dead and, and you, you get that horrible thing where your head goes underwater, your feet go up and uh, it's, it's pretty kooky. But having a little bit more volume in the nose helps you to have the confidence to push down on the nose to keep the board flat so that you can get the board skimming across the top of the water nice and early, planing, which is what we want to do. Now, again, it's not just that that we've got volume there, but it's also domes um, so that in a very subtle way, so that if it does go underwater, it comes up nice and smoothly because it can shed the water. With boards that have got a flat deck or certainly like a scoop to the deck, if it goes underwater, which is much easier to, for them to go underwater anyway because of the lack of volume, but as they come up, they're so unstable, they, they skate around from side to side and it's an absolute nightmare. When Adrian told me about this uh, design concept, I instantly knew that it was perfect for full drive. So uh, we included it there and it really, really does work a treat. Okay, next I want to talk about the rails. I think it's fair to say that out of everything about the board, the rails were the hardest bit to get right. And in the end, Big shout out to Jamie Wise, who works for Full Drive. He absolutely rips prone foiling and sup down winding. He looked at what we were doing and he said, guys, you're, you're focusing on making rails like a sup down wind board. And we'd gone through a few iterations, you know, quite vertical or quite deep Vs. He said, why don't you make the rails more surf orientated? So Adrian worked his magic on the software design program and we knew even before we made a prototype to test we knew that the rails Jamie suggested had tied everything together and it really works a treat so we've got um, quite a rounded surf like rail here with very gentle bevels that are so gentle that they still act as part of the planing surface um, even this little section here. But the real beauty of, of these rails is that they are so forgiving on touchdowns. So when you're carving, if you touch the rails down, you barely even notice it. I mean, yeah, if you sink the rail in the water, of course it's, you, you're going to notice it. But um, I was so impressed at how well they deal with water touchdowns when you're carving um, and it allows also for stability when you're uh, when you're accelerating. The boards that are like this or like this they're very very um, unstable laterally when you're um, when you're beginning to accelerate to build up board speed. So the rails worked super super well. Okay so the last part of the design really are the mast tracks. Now, being a prone downwind style board rather than a prone board, the rails are further forward in the board compared with a true prone design. So a lot of mid-length boards that are coming out now have got much more of a prone board design and therefore the mast tracks are further back. What that means is that you are standing quite close to the back of the board. But with the mast tracks moved further forward, they're quite long, the mast tracks anyway, you're able to stand pretty much in the middle of the board. And look at the distance that I've moved from a prone design to a prone downwind design. Prone design, look at all that distance there, extra swing weight, lack of maneuverability. Yes, it's a surfy feel and some people like that. And you can move your mast back in the tracks if you like that. But the whole point of this board is that you have the option um, to run uh, your feet in this position 
and look at the distance here. Now it's pretty much the same distance from my front foot to the nose of the board as I would have on a 4.6 prone board. It becomes super maneuverable. Um, so not only do we have that lovely advantage of being able to generate board speed super quick and easy to make it easier to get up on foil, but we've now got this performance aspect of the design that allows it to feel super maneuverable, very low swing weight, um, and it's just such a well-balanced board. It really is. So all of these features, um, I think allows it, for me anyway, uh, to be one of the most versatile boards that I've ever used. Prone downwinding is just out of this world, it really is. I can get up on foil, two sizes foil, smaller than what I could do normally before. Um, surfing, whether it's really fat, low rolling swell, fast moving rolling swell, these boards allow you to pick up speed so much quicker, so much more efficiently using less battery power. Um, they are absolutely mind blowing for that. For surfing small waves, again, you know, you don't need a wave to get up on foil. It helps and you can conserve battery power by just a little bit of a wave or certainly off the shoulder if you want. Um, for, for big waves, okay, it might not be the most suitable board. I would definitely downsize to a 4.6 um, for, for really big waves. Um, but, and this is for me the most mind-blowing aspect of this design, flat water pumping. I did not think this was going to work very well for flat water pumping, but it does. It really does. It's just so well balanced. Standing in the middle here, A, it's easy to get up on foil, but it just pumps really well. Okay, it's not going to pump as well as a 4.0 or a, or a tray or, you know, just one of those dock start boards that are super thin, like 12 litres or less, but it feels similar to, I'd say, a, a 4.6 or a 4.8 to pump. Um, but with all of the other benefits that we've, uh, we've discussed. Now, yes, given a choice, I would prefer to have a 4.0 for flat water pumping, a 4.6 for surfing, this for prone downwinding, wing specific design. But if I had to have a one board quiver, this would be it. It really, really does everything very, very well. They say that a jack of all trades, but a master of none. I would say a jack of all trades, but also a master of prone downwinding. I really would. And maybe even surfing rolling swell. And I don't know, the rest is up to you. It's all about personal preference. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what to expect if you decide to go down the route of getting a prone downwind board be careful, some mid-lengths are more prone board designed rather than prone downwind board design. Um, so choose carefully what suits your style and your conditions and what you want to do um, before you make your decision. Okay, so who are these boards for? Well, it might help if I start off with who they're not for. And in my opinion, they're not really suited for beginners, certainly not complete beginners. They're just too technical. Um, beginners would uh, benefit from the extra width, the stability that comes with that. Um, personally, I think 5.5 to 6.5 in length by anywhere between 22 and 26 inches wide. Um, 24 being, I think, a brilliant width to, uh, to learn on. Um, it hasn't got too much drag, but it's still very stable. Um, obviously, volume, depending on your weight, is really important. Um, but having said that these are technical boards, you don't need to have a particularly high level of skill or experience to be able to, uh, to get used to them and to like them. Um, now, if you're coming up from a small board, upsizing to these, then I don't think you'll find there's any problem whatsoever. But if you're coming from a big board, especially you know, the wide wing foiling or SUP boards, um, and you're downsizing to these, especially downsizing in width, then yes, you will find them quite twitchy and unstable for the first, maybe the first few sessions. But the good news is you get used to it very, very quickly and you will soon, trust me, you will soon reap the benefits of that extra 
acceleration and board speed um, that helps you get up on foil so much easier. Um, but there's no denying they are a little bit more technical. Not as technical as boards that are, I would say, 18 and under in uh, width, 18 inches or less in width. It becomes very technical, very... Um, well, again, it doesn't take that long to get used to them. Um, but you, I think, in my opinion, you do have to have a high level of skill and um, it sort of limits their use. Uh, they are very, very good for um, downwinding and catching fast rolling swell. Uh, but really, the other use cases, um, this sort of planing hull rather than the displacement hull, just makes everything so much easier, in my opinion. And um, as such, it's, it's now a very, very versatile design. <clears throat> okay, so why would I upsize? Why would anybody want to upsize their boards? Well, mainly for me, I was prone surfing and prone downwinding using a 4.6 by 37 litre. That was my preferred size um, and dimensions of, uh, of prone board. I would use it for downwinding as well. And then one day I got caught out. I was nearly a kilometre offshore and I ran out of battery power and I had to paddle in and it was, I was very worried for a period of time. Um, and I swore to myself that I'd never go that far offshore with a tiny little prone board and no backup again. Um, so that's actually what sparked me to, to start experimenting with this sort of a design. Um, so the extra volume, which doesn't really impact on performance as I've gone into previously in the video, um, makes it much safer if something does happen. I feel confident that I could do a very long paddle in on a board like this. Um, whereas I can't say the same for the smaller prone boards. So upsizing has its advantages for prone downwinding, even for catching that, that fast moving rolling swell or any waves that aren't, or any lumps, bumps, whatever you like to call them, that don't form faces, that don't um, have any white water. You can catch pretty much anything. Um, they really are very, very good like that. Um, they're obviously for people who want to downsize. Uh, so whether you're on a long um, narrow or a long wide high volume downwind board or um, a big high volume uh, wing foil board, then going down to these boards, whether it's the 50, 60 or 70 litre version, you will notice the difference. You really will. That narrower, narrower width, I can't tell you until you experience it, you will find out for yourself just how much of a difference it makes to the board speed and therefore how easy it is to get up on the foil. Now for me personally, 80 kilograms, the 50 litre is amazing. And I will, as explained before, use it for pretty much everything. The 60 litre, I'll use for prone downwinding and I'll use for maybe for light wind winging as well. Although I do actually really prefer this one for even for light wind winging, because um, when you've got full drive attached, I'll go into that in another video. So the 60 litre really is only, for me anyway, I would only consider using that one for prone downwinding. Um, the 70 litre for me personally, I just find it too big. I, I prefer a smaller board. And the reason why I prefer a smaller board is because of the performance. And this design allows me to have a longer, higher volume board, but still retain that performance. So if that's what you're after, these boards are for you. Um, I said about the technical aspect, if you've got any level of experience whatsoever, you will get used to them very, very quickly. Um, if you're already used to small prone boards, I don't think it'll be any problem for you whatsoever from the off. So there we go. I hope I've covered everything. If I've forgotten anything or you've got any questions, please do fire them at me. I'll do my best to answer. And in the meantime, here's some action.